pray. And we thought we'd give you thanks to be here on this second Sunday of Easter. When we hear God believing. When we look at our faith. Faith, Lord, that includes hearing testimonies of past experiences. When you say, Lord, blessed are those who believe and have not yet seen. So we give you thanks, Lord, for loving us so much. We give you thanks for those who have told your story throughout the ages, so that we also may know your story, may know your salvation. Thank you for Thomas, who gets a bad rap, but we love him. We love that example, my Lord and my God. May we claim that even today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson today is from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one <coughs> claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus <coughs> and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person, not one among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each <coughs> as any had need. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 133. Let's read it together in unison. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle this morning is a reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you that what was from the beginning, I beg your pardon, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also 
for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, Glory to you, Lord Christ. when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my, in his, in my side, excuse me, unless, I, unless I see the mark of the nails in his side and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I would not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. So many of us who have 
questions, many who have doubts, and those who come to the party late. <laughs> Obviously, doubts and questions and even fear are important aspects of our lives with which we need to grapple, with which we need to understand as much as we may. So important that we hear this gospel lesson every year on the second Sunday of Easter. Amen. And as we hear it again and again, we halfway wonder why Thomas does not grasp and embrace the good news of our Lord's resurrection. The ten who see Jesus on Easter evening tell Thomas they have seen the Lord alive. But then I can sympathize with Thomas. We like to see things for ourselves, right? And experience the excitement ourselves to come to these such major feats. Thomas wants to see for himself the marks of the nails and the spear and not only see the marks but touch them. And I believe Thomas is in good company. Far too often we give Thomas a bad rap because of his perceived unbelief. We say that things had to be so much different then than they are now. Really? Suspicion and mistrust could not be as rampant as they are today. Really? Remember what they did to Jesus on Good Friday now about 10 days ago. Remember who among his friends betrayed him and denied him. Remember the crowd loved him on Sunday and hated him on Friday. Times may be different, but humans still are humans. They carry with them the same traits and characteristics. Amen. So we label others who have difficulties with belief, doubting Thomas's. Do we reserve any room for ourselves in that labeling scheme? Thomas is not alone, nor is he the anomaly in today's gospel lesson. Consider carefully what Jesus does on Easter evening. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Those ten. Then, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. The disciples did not rejoice when Jesus first appears to them in what seems thin air. And we are not told they run and meet the risen Lord with joy in their hearts and with open arms. Instead, they are ensconced in fear. Fear, which recluses them in the house with the doors locked. If the scandal of the cross is bizarre at this point, now the scandal of the resurrection is plain absurd. The joke is on them. The search parties are looking for those associated with this man said to have risen from the dead. And might we also add, back in John 11, Jesus has been talking about going to the cross. And in the meantime, Lazarus dies. And Jesus stays a few more days so that God may be glorified when he does come into Bethany. But when Jesus says, it's time for us to go. It's not Peter, James, or John that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration that says, let us go and also die with him. It is Thomas. Thomas says, let us go and also die with him. Thomas knew something about the price that it was going to cost. And perhaps that may be why he was so reluctant to believe. Thomas knew about death. He didn't quite know about resurrection yet. He wanted to see for himself. Many, some theologians included, deny the bodily resurrection of Jesus. But Thomas affirms for us our Lord is resurrected from the dead in bodily form, the crucified body with skin and bones, living and breathing, scarred by human violence. Not a ghost or spirit only. 
Ghosts and spirits do not have bodies. Later we're told that Jesus eats breakfast with the disciples on the beach. He's also known to Cleopas, and Cleopas is friend. In the breaking of bread, does the ghost eat? <laughs> Khalil Gibran writes, Doubt is a pain too lonely to know that faith is his twin brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. Doubt is a pain too lonely to know that faith is his twin brother. Perhaps they are fraternal twins where doubt sees faith. Faith answers doubt. So what is left unsaid or remains obscure often speaks volumes. The ten rejoice when Jesus shows them his hands aside and not before. Thomas is not the long ranger when it comes to doubts among the disciples, but Thomas may be the only one among his peers honest enough to admit his doubts. <clears throat> Ten are bound by fear when Jesus appears to them on Easter evening. They then tell Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but they do not tell Thomas that they too have seen his hands and his side. The same for which Thomas passed. I believe Thomas may have made a good Episcopalian. <laughs> we pride ourselves on welcoming all, asking questions, and living in tension with questions which involve discernment and faith. And Thomas paves the way for us to ask questions, mm -hmm. even of our Lord. Yes. Thomas is not fearful, but in fact, Telling the ten he will not believe until he also has sufficient proof, just like they receive. And with his proof, Thomas affirms the resurrection deeply and personally and possessively. My Lord and my God. God. Doubt may bolster our faith and freedom. Fear will imprison us and hold us hostage. Doubt may be lonely for a while, but fear oscillates. Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not yet seen, but believe. Mm -hmm. May we, like Thomas, be courageous. As we confront our doubts, we may want to own them, but may never fear paralyzed. Lord and my God. Mm. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord Praise is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 May we now affirm our faith as we say together in the high seat for you. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by name, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and a subtle church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Then we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found in our bulletin on page 6. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Episcopal Anglican province of Alexandria. In the diocese, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for Resurrection Episcopal Largo, St. Stephen's, Newport Ritchie, St. Alfred's, Palm Harbor, Holy Spirit, Safety Harbor, St. Andrew's, Spring Hill, and All Saints in Tarpon Springs. Let's turn to the cover of our bulletin and say together our prayer for the gift of a priest. Almighty God, you give our every gift. Look graciously on the church and so have the minds of those who shall choose the priest for this marriage. That we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and be with us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On this day, we praise our God for the dying which destroyed our death, and we pray for our world in need of life, saying, Lord, have mercy. The Lord calls us to examine the wounded hands and feet of the risen one and to know the depth of his love for us. Let us approach Christ in faith and share the good news with all we meet. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The apostles received the Holy Spirit and the grace to lighten the burdens of one another's sin. May the church be faithful to this gift. May all the baptized live with abundant compassion for all, especially for those shut out from the society. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ calls us blessed, who not having seen, yet believe, may more and more of God's people all the created order become a sign of the resurrection in the world, and may our faith give in the world, and may our faith give courage to the doubting. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We are strengthened by Christ's resurrection to share the power of the Spirit with all the suffering. We pray for all in any need. May the power of Christ's resurrection be of life to all who have little reason to hope. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> May that morning star which never sets, Christ our light, find us burning with charity until the world is enlightened with love. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> we pray for the sick, the suffering, and for all who stand in need, especially presiding Bishop Michael Bruce Curry, Aaron. Patricia Sue, Cliff Vivian Lewis Ernie Claude, Cynthia Allison Hannah, Josie Katie Shirley, Danielle Barber, Caroline Rodman Richard, Dan Candy Peter Tony Mark Doreen Shanice Mordecai Jean Alex and others. <coughs> Inspire and fill us with the fire of healing that our sickness may be turned to hell, so we may once again join together in prayer. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Eternal, eternally created God, give us the faith and courage to recreate the world in your image. We ask this in the name of the risen one, Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
And we also pray to you now for the forgiveness of our sins, saying together, have mercy on us, most merciful Creator. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold by your spirit, that you may be the sister of you and the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And all the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it is great, great for us to be here. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Anybody? Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, she's coming. Go ahead. I just want to uh, let everybody know there are fresh eggs in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you're interested, now they're fresh, which means you do have to watch them. They're ready for the chicken, but they're fresh eggs. And, <laughs> and again, if anyone's interested in getting training for the simulator, please let me know so I can create a list and go ahead and schedule that to take place. Thanks, Yate. Jane. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, fast justice ministers. I sent an email reminder yesterday, and I'm speaking to those of you watching from home as well. The rally. This is one of the events that we all agree to attend when we become justice ministers. The rally is this Thursday, April 11th at 7 p.m. at St. Michael, the Archangel Church. It is the all-important meeting at which we learn what to expect at our Nehemiah action. Um, we also will be uh, uh, bothering you all to see that we can inspire you to come to the action, which is on April 30th. More about that later. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Candy, good to see you. Welcome back. And Reverend D. Welcome back. And Lou, uh, Deacon Lou and Barbara, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. You're home. <laughs> All right. Paul, do you have an announcement about any choir rehearsal or anything? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, choir, let's take one more week off because I don't have something there. <laughs> okay. All right. Next week, uh, Father Crow will be with us next week. Then he needs a little break. You know, we need to give him a little bit of a break. And so the week of the next week, the week of the 21st, we will have morning prayer, and the week of the 28th, Reverend D will be with us. And then Father Crow will kindly 
he has kindly agreed to be back with us. In between that, I, I believe I haven't even discussed it with Yate, but I just want to alert the congregation. I think we need to do a little bit of spring cleaning around here. I know it's Yate's function. She's the junior warden, but I think you will be hearing from us a little bit, just a parish-wide uh, building spring cleaning. So you'll hear more from us. And that, that accounts for both buildings. Uh, Fort Hall and here. It's not that many of us, but we can get a few things done to spruce up a little bit. Okay. It's time. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking <laughs> over there for you. <laughs> birthdays, anniversaries. Oh, anniversaries, <laughs> birthdays. Anyone want a prayer in general? Yes. surgery. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Savior Jesus Christ, 
Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in this fragile and broken world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters and sons, that with St. Augustine, our patron saint, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. Amen. And now through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to stand and join hands and to sing. Lord and my God, 
body of Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Amen. Amen. How many of you had a good time today? How many of you are willing to share the word of God to each and every person you come in with? Oh, all right. All right. Now, here, here, here to give. You only have to invite one person. One person. So next Sunday, one person. Sunday after that, one person. If that person say, I ain't got no ride, say, listen, I'm going to bring my jalopy over there. We're going to ride together. Okay? But go out and praise the Lord. Hmm, I forgot my name. What the Oh, thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Bless the Lord. Ah, oh, give me some. Hold on. <laughs> Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. <laughs> See, but I might come back. I gotta, I gotta watch the wall over there. But I might, I might come back and see. I can get it. I'll leave that to the wrong side.